Hi everybody, this is Eric Campbell. I'm going to show you a brief replay of a design that I created, and I'm going to show it to you in Hatch Embroidery Software by Wilcom. Because you can create something very similar, even though this original piece wasn't created in Hatch, it was created in Wilcom. Um, but in Hatch, it can't be done. Uh, this is a jumping mouse that was created for a local wildlife reserve here. And I'm going to show you a really easy way that I used to do fur. I actually use fills. This isn't all manual, though there are some manual stitches in the shading. This was actually accomplished using fill stitches that were used, applied with the Florentine effect so that I could curve individual fills to portions of the body. And the way it was done was by layering multiple fills at lighter than full densities to build up to a full density at the end when I had all the layers of the mouse put together. So first, let's watch it replay. without the true view on, so that we can see a little bit better the layering effect. First the legs, then you'll see there's some ticking that's going to show through in the light tan color, then the medium brown, then the darker brown for shading, and then finally there are some manual stitches done in the darkest brown and black colors. The reason the tail was separated is that this is done for a cap and had to run from the center out and the bottom up to run cleanly. We're going to go ahead and do this again in the true view. You see the feet run first. Then this little patch of ticking that's going to show through the fill. Then the belly, which is at a full density. We see the light brown running at a medium density. Then the darkest brown for shading leaving a gap for where that white tick is going to through, come through. Then the manual shading in the eye, then the tail, shading and outlines, and then the dot in the eye. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little further. Because the, those are those fills. See how much lighter this is than this one? That's going to be showing through the medium brown fill as it completes. So first here is our medium brown fill. Just a little tiny bit will peek through here. And you see the curves follow the body. These individual fills also have a, a pattern that in Wilcom E4 would be a random pattern, but there's a pattern much like it called pattern 37 for your tatami fills in Hatch that gives a more random feel to the texture of the fur. And this part is manual shading, whereas these are just fills again that follow the same curve as the previous fill. In the end, these are some manually placed stitches that you can see. I've gone back and forth with what some people call a vermicelli pattern here just to make it more random. And then run across these edges, as you can see. Let's go ahead and go all the way to the end. We're going to go back to our true view. And if we zoom in, you can see how these layers are put together. And then... We're going to go ahead and hide each color separately so you can take a look at it. There is the belly, the little bit of a light pale ticking that's going to come through the next color. There's the medium brown, and as you can see, we have a Florentine with that randomized pattern. And right here where there's some breaks due to the Florentine, that's actually where that shading is going to come through. As you can see, we have separate areas so that the haunch has a little bit of a curve here. The back has this sway here. And that the head has this curve here so that it follows the natural curvature that you would see in the animal. Then you also see how we have a little bit of jagged edge on the side, back sides of these fills and on this split satin for the arm. Then there's this darkest brown. And as you can see, this is actually a very straight plane fill. It's very loose because we're building up to a target density of 0.4 of full coverage, but we don't want to have full coverage on each row. And you can see it looks pretty ragged. It's not exactly very clean, but that's all right because we're doing this. Same thing with that pattern fill number 37 to get a rough look. This part is actually drawn with straight stitches manually, just following along around the cues from the original art.
there's a little eye. But before that, here's the darkest color, which is the outlining. It's a super dark brown, almost black. And you can see what we have is the outlining, a little tiny bit more shading. It's going to fill in that back area. You can see that I've left open this area where that light color from the very first color is going to show through. I've gone ahead and added just outside of the jagged edge a very dark border. So you get that dark edge on the animal. We also have multiple passes of straight stitch around here as well as detail work around all the, the nose, the ears, the eyes. And this, what I like to call like a vermicelli stitch, which just means like worms, like little pasta, vermicular. It's like little worms squiggling back and forth. And this is random, but it does sort of follow the pattern of the sway in the back. And that's really so that you can get some detail in there and break up those lines. When we put them all together, and we can see this was the original art. I'm going to take the lines off so you can see it. Right, it's not particularly detailed art, but it does give us some ideas for shapes. And you can see how I followed these lines to get my curves for the eventual piece. So let's drop that original art out. Let's bring the stitches back. And then we can see our finished piece again. So that's that. And here is a little cutaway so you can actually see the fellow, how he looked when he was embroidered. Though you can't see quite as much of the ticking here uh, in this particular sample. It was a little random as to which part of that little white ticking came through. It was what the biologists over at the uh, Nature Center wanted to see, just little tiny bits of the white showing through. What you can see is the layers of browns building together and then the dark shading on top. Uh, it's not exactly what you might be looking for, but you will see how there's some roughness there. There's the multiple colors building together and how you get a fairly naturalist look, despite the fact that you used a lot of fills to create the areas that underlie everything. So honestly, with a little bit of fill, with a more random texture, and with a, just a bit of drawing on your own uh, sketchy shading, you can get a fur-like texture without... Uh, doing everything manually, even if manual work is probably the best way to get the most uh, realistic fur treatment.